Can I trust that? <laughs> Can I trust that this is actually going to happen? It's not going to boo me off. It's saying that my internet is not strong enough, and I just installed a booster um, the other day. So hopefully the internet will actually be strong enough to do this. Um, okay, so I want to talk about why the concept of finding your purpose is so ridiculous. Um, and let me just share this really quickly so that other people can hop on. Um, hey, Sean. Um, oh, I owe you an email. I've been a little, I um, quit sugar and coffee and all these great things again this, this past week. And so I've been a little like foggy headed and forgotten to do quite a few things. Um, but it's not personal. So, and, and I, do, I, I do want to talk to you. Um, okay, so I'm sharing my video so that it's, people can see it and find me. Hey, um, okay, so let's talk about this because I'm a life purpose expert, but this concept of finding your purpose is like, it's ridiculous. It's so dumb. Um, and, and here's why. And, you know, your purpose, the, the concept of finding your purpose implies in it, and language matters in these types of things, implies in it that your purpose is outside of you and it's something you can't find. As if you're playing hide and seek with your purpose, right? Which is possible. You're able to play an emotional version or spiritual version of hide and seek. In fact, that's probably a lot of what life is. Um, but but it, it, it gets us stuck in this pattern of seeking where we're always looking outside of ourselves. And, you know, I know that this is a bit semantic, like we're getting into semantics here. But it actually does matter, particularly if you've been on the hunt for your purpose for quite a while. So every time you say, I'm looking for my purpose, I just want to find my purpose, I wish I could figure out what my purpose is, like that question actually isn't too bad. But the, the searching for, the looking for, the finding, the discovering, all of that, it keeps us stuck in this um, pattern of separation. So you can become aware of your purpose, you can like enlighten into your purpose, but the idea of finding your purpose, and I've been guilty of using this language myself, actually, um, because it's common. It's the common language people use. Like, you want to find your purpose? Like, so I use it to communicate with people because I know that's what they're seeking, but the seeking itself is the problem, right? This is why I'm really, really different than a lot of other coaches is I, I give you back yourself. It's like you dropped the baton. I pick it up and I hand it back to you. So it's not a process of me saying what's your purpose. It's a process, the work, if you do this work with me, it's a process of you realizing your purpose. I can give it to you right away because I know how to talk to your soul, but you have to then embody and take it. And that's where the seeking comes in, right? We think like, oh, it's this thing massively outside of us, but it's not. Your purpose is who you are. You can't be separate from your purpose. Like, it's not, it's not like something that you just, like, go to the costume store and discover the right costume one day and you put it on and you're like, oh, thank God, now I have my purpose suit on. Like, that whole idea is based in social roles and expectation. And this is a sentence I want you to remember. And let me look at my notes to make sure I say it correctly. Um, yeah, so your purpose is, it's, it's beyond, well, no, your purpose is not expectation. So your purpose is not, I'm expected to fill this role. Your purpose is not, I'm expected to um, be a certain job description. So your purpose is not about expectation. It's about what's beyond explanation. And what I mean by that is that so many of us are looking for, hey, Joanna, we're looking for a role that we can play. And so we think that a purpose is actually if we really broke it down, what we're really looking for is like, tell me how I fit in and how I can be valuable. And that has a couple of like, pretty big issues in it, right? One is the aspect of not feeling valuable inherently. And two um, is that we're looking outside of ourselves for an answer and something we can do to join. Hey, Bethany. Um, okay. Keep on going, Internet. You can do it. So when we... Assume, so say somebody said, I've seen this written before. Somebody will post on Facebook like, what's your, how did you discover your purpose? And somebody will say like, well, once I became a nurse, I was on purpose. It's like, all right, but what about kids? What about babies? What about people who don't have jobs? Like we're interlacing in dangerous ways purpose with vocation. Um, and when we do that, we cut ourselves really short because then we're tying our worth to an action and then we 
But you know, that has problems inherently in it. Like, I don't feel valuable on my own. I only feel valuable based on what I do. I'm only worthy based on what I do. I'm only able to live my purpose through this one specific area. What happens if that area changes? You get fired, you get injured, something changes. Your self-definition um, breaks apart. And then you don't know who or what you are without it. Um, and then we go on this massive, like, what's the meaning of my life things, you know, all like the stereotypical movies of men going off to discover themselves and all of that. So this, this languaging issue of finding your purpose is dangerous because it pulls us into this looking outside of ourselves for social roles and social expectations of us. And what I invite you to do is just like let your mind open to the fact that if it's possible to have a purpose, then you must it must also be possible that you could have always had a purpose. Because it's strange to me to assume that you don't have a purpose until the ripe age of like 18 to 21 when you get a job, at least in Western society, and then you have that purpose until 65. And like, do you not have one on the other side? So <laughs> let yourself think about that. Have you assumed that a purpose equals a vocation? And then the second piece is, okay, well, if purpose doesn't equal vocation, then what is purpose? Is purpose a message that I share? Is purpose a way that I'm being? Is a purpose a specific um, like concept that I think about? A specific aura that I bring into the room? And it, you know, we can get all garbled up in some of this thinking. And the way that I approach it is that purpose is an emotional spectrum. So each of us has like a predominant challenge that we're working out per se. And that's an emotional spectrum from a high emotion to a low emotion or what I call the light and the shadow side. Now, of course, that spectrum isn't linear. You're not going from feeling bad to feeling good. Like the purpose of your life is not to start feeling crappy and end feeling good because this is all cyclical. Like if everything is one, um, sorry, there's guys sawing trees next door. Hopefully you can't hear that. Um, but I can hear it. Hold on. So hard to focus when somebody's cutting down a tree right outside your window. I guess I should have gone on live earlier, but I did not know they were going to come cut a tree. Can you still hear me? Thumbs up if you can hear me, please, um, because I just put in my headphones. And we all know iPhones like to break. Um, so everything is cyclical, which means you're continually exploring out good things. <laughs> you're continually exploring out this purpose area. So say that I would, they are living out their purpose. Oh my God, what's their purpose? What's my purpose here? It's, you know what? This is a great example. Thank you, Joanna. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go with it. So this is a good example. So if your purpose area, like my purpose area, is something around, and words never really fully capture, right? This is what we're trying to say about this finding your purpose thing. Like semantics matter and words can affect you. And the words we have in English around seeking and discovering are inherently disempowering because they externalize things from you. And so we need to re-internalize it. And perhaps, perhaps we don't have a word. Perhaps it's awaken to your purpose. Perhaps it's own your purpose. Perhaps it's um, embody your purpose. Those are all better words than finding, which keeps us stuck in looking outside of ourselves and feeling weak and as if we don't have the answers when we inherently embody it already. Like you are your purpose. You can't be separated from it. Um, it's just not possible. So if my purpose area is something around... Um, insecurity to enoughness. I love the word enoughness. So live video would be a great example of that. Like, okay, I've got to pull up some like serious, you know, get to a place in myself, get to a place in my mental um, workings around the work that I do, get to a place with my own comfort level speaking, with video, with technology, with all of these things. And then somebody's cutting down a tree <laughs> outside the window, right? So that's going to trigger the insecurity side of my cyclical spectrum, <laughs> my spherical spectrum. Um, and so here I go like feeling triggered on insecurity, like, oh my gosh, I'm failing this. Oh my gosh, it's never going to work. Oh my gosh, um, nothing I do ever works out. Like, oh my gosh, I just could have done it earlier and I planned it wrong and everything I do goes wrong. You know, I could easily go there. And that's what happens with our purpose. We have a moment of a high end of it, the spectrum, and then these low end of the spectrums come in. And we talked about this before. It was, I think it was last week, um, maybe on Monday, where we talked about how that's not sabotage. It's actually a deepening. And so this is an opportunity for me to deepen into my own internal resources of enoughness. 
Like, it's enough. It's enough to be as it is doing a video with a tree coming down <laughs> and a chainsaw going, right? Um, so we really want to get like super detailed with ourselves about how we're defining the self outside of the self. So there's a, there's a part here that I want to talk about in much deeper in a different video. I keep hinting at it. Um, so we just need to get it out there. But there's, there's a thing here where the self can't see the self. Like we always have to um, define in relation to other people. Like I don't know who I am without you guys being here. I can't define as somebody doing a video without people watching a video. I can't define as somebody who teaches without yoga students showing up. So there's always this little interplay between our own understanding of ourself and how others see us. And that's good. That's normal. That's totally fine. Because if everything was one big blob, we wouldn't be able to see it. We wouldn't be able to know boundaries on it and see, you know, who I am versus who everybody else is. So to some extent, it makes sense to look around us for clues to our purpose and clues to our calling. It's a natural instinct. We'll put it that way. Because that is how we, we relate and self-define. Hi, Melissa. Um, but what we want to be careful of is getting so lost in that rhetoric and so lost in that um, habit that we forget how to self-identify. Because there's a balance, right? Like, I couldn't show up as a yoga teacher and understand that I'm a teacher with students if I didn't have a desire to teach, right? Like, there's an internal component there as well. And the internal component is what really matters when it comes to your purpose. Because you can try every career under the sun. You can go to every career counselor, read every amazing book on purpose. And there's some amazing ones out there. I make it a point to read them um, if I can or if I know of them. Um, but, but then we get hooked in expectation. Like, well, what did my parents think my purpose was? What did my teachers think I was gifted at? What does my spouse think I should do? Um, you know, and we forget that there's a deeper inherent part that that actual process of feeling frustrated, that process of seeking, is actually pointing you back to the pain of that emotional spectrum that you are embodying here. And that every lesson that you'll learn, or I hate lessons, um, every <laughs> language matters, but sometimes it's hard to find the right words, um, that every experience that you go through, whether it's considered painful or pleasurable, um, or taking you in the right direction or taking you backwards, however we interpret it, that every experience in that journey is a reflection of something your purpose is working out, something your soul is working out. So it's on purpose. So anytime I feel insecure, I'm on purpose to feeling enough, right? Because it's, that's my purpose area is to play that out. And if I didn't feel insecure, I'd be absolutely useless at helping other people feel like they're enough. And if I didn't struggle with my own definition, then I would be completely useless at helping other people define themselves, right? Serenity comes when you block out the other voices. Yeah, totally. And accept that that's part of the deal. Like, we can't pretend they're not there. We can't blame them for being there. Everybody relates to everybody else. And that's part of the deal. I can't know, I think we talked about this the other day, I can't know I'm blonde if there aren't brunettes in the world. I can't know I have blue eyes if people didn't have brown eyes. The concept wouldn't exist. So it might be that your um, vocation, your, yeah, your vocation, the thing that you make money doing, it might be that that, the dreaded J-O-B that we talk about, um, <coughs> it might be that um, the, the way of doing it doesn't exist yet. And so it's like this stumbling, fumbling thing. I mean, when I started um, out wanting to do this work in international relations that I used to do, the place I worked and the topic I worked on didn't even exist. The Department of Homeland Security didn't exist. And this office of um, stabilization and reconstruction in foreign countries didn't exist either. <laughs> so like, but I still had the desire, right? I had the desire to do something related to something. It was to help other people find peace. It was to help, you know, this gut reaction feeling I had of what was possible in the world. And that feeling of what was possible was so overpowering. I knew it was possible because it's true for me. And the same thing's going on for you. The vision in your head of what's possible in the world is not the same as the vision in my head. And this is the premise of my work. So I'm a vision-based strategist, right? So 
your soul is playing out a specific vision. And we know that because sometimes in life you hit on something that doesn't feel fair. And you're like, whoa, 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 the world doesn't have to be like that. That is your soul giving its unique voice versus the outside world. And so when you go to find your purpose, it doesn't ha- we can't find it by looking around. We can't find it by taking skills tests. We can't find it by seeing what job is a good fit. We have to go to that soul's vision of the world, period. Because that's the only place where you can find that answer of, Who am I? Why am I here? What am I here to do? Then we can find ways to explore it. There's nothing wrong with trying different tools, trying different um, playgrounds, I suppose. You know, a lot of the self-help stuff is playgrounds, right? So maybe it's a playground of storytelling. Maybe it's a playground of um, self-definition through like trying on different roles. Like I do improv comedy and I teach yoga and I teach meditation, which is one of the same to me, but some people view it as different than yoga. And I, you know, ski and I do this and I do, you know, like, so so trying on those roles, like that's fun because your purpose has a way of expressing itself and you can express it in every way because it's who you are. In fact, you can't not express it, Um, but you can express it deliberately and consciously and intentionally through lots of different avenues and you can change those at will, which is why knowing your purpose beyond a job title is so powerful because then when your job title switches, you don't have to go through such incredible depression of who you are because, you know, you might have lost your colleagues, you might have lost your daily routine, you might have lost the normal things you're used to, but at least you don't lose the central thread of who you are and what you bring to the world. You still have value, even if it's not socially understood value. So let me just check my notes. Um, This is really, the, the key point is that Your purpose is the opposite. It is inherently the opposite of expectation. So because because it's beyond explanation, right? It's a feeling. It's a way of being. It's who you are in totality. But particularly, at least in my work and the way I look at the world and and purpose, captured by one key theme. So that theme we can put some words to, but words are always going to not be good enough right? Because it's a feeling. It's a big, big feeling. And then everything we do in life gets us closer and closer and closer to knowing the right word or how to, um, Ooh, something juicy. What's the word? Like define it. It's not a juicy word, but it felt juicy coming through. (laughs) And I hate the word juicy. So, you know, it was good. Um, but, but the key part is to stop seeking because we can let it happen, right? Like we see ourselves in those moments of like, whoa, it doesn't have to be like that. A child dies of leukemia and you're like, whoa, it doesn't have to be like that, you know, or whatever it is. When you feel that moment of life isn't fair, that's your soul speaking. We can't seek that out, right? We can't like go and like consult with gods on the hill and hope to be like gifted some perfect job. That's not how it works. That's not what purpose is. Purpose isn't a job. It's not a job. It's who you are. And so when we're trying to find like the exact right job, like it might not exist, period. And even if it's not the right thing, it's what you bring to it that brings it, that that gives it purpose, right? And so there's another video I did on the difference between purpose and meaning. And this is where most of us get caught up is most of us actually want to feel like we're, we have meaningful lives on a day-to-day basis. We don't necessarily care if we have purposeful lives. And so many of us, when we're seeking a purpose, finding a purpose, what we're really saying is, can you show me a way to feel meaningful every day? Can you prove to me that my work on a daily basis is meaningful and contributing in meaningful ways? Which gives me a sense of, I did something. I contributed, I have value. My life meant something. So many of us want to feel that versus knowing the purpose of being here and the actual like thread that you bring into this world that weaves in with everything else. That's cool. That's esoteric. That's where I love to be, right? Like what is your actual unique thread? Meaning is a different conversation. And that's where we get really, really hung up in the job thing and purpose versus vocation. So we're talking about avocation, right? Like passion, like big, big stuff. And we got to let ourselves off the hook for seeking all the time. 
because fine, it's what we're trained to do. It's what we know how to do. We, we're self, um, not self, um, socially realized beings, meaning like we realize ourselves through social interaction. And I think Sean has a great point here, but this, like what he says, serenity comes when you block out the other voices. Yes, we have to tune into the self and then understand what it means about relation. So we can find a purpose. Uh, we can awaken to our purpose. See, I even did it. <laughs> we can awaken to our purpose and then find ways to feel meaningful in the expression of it. So I can wash my dishes on purpose. Not meaning like deliberately, but meaning like in fully embodying my purpose. And actually, that's an area where I play out all the time. House chores are a great area for me to play out insecurity or enoughness. Am I doing it because I'm enough or am I doing it because I think my boyfriend's going to yell at me? <laughs> right? Like that's one of the areas I play this out. That's my purpose coming out. I feel insecure and so I feel guilted into doing things because of expectation, because of social roles. Am I a good girlfriend enough? Am I a good housemaid enough? You know, and so I act in these ways that are based in guilt or I act in ways that are based in purpose. If I was fully enough, what choices would I make? Maybe I would clean from sheer joy because I'm so excited about my life and everything that's in it. Maybe I would take a day off and not do anything because I know that I'm not expected to. And that's that little bit of difference between expectation and beyond explanation, right? So if we're in the place of expectation, like I can't have a successful business if I don't know my purpose. I can't be a good human if I don't know my purpose. I'll be a failure as a person if I don't know my purpose. Like all of that keeps you punishing yourself and looking outside of yourself for this mysterious purpose. But you're on purpose already. You can't be separated from it. It's who you are. You were born into it. In some traditions, you carried it through before this birth, right? So that's not the right question. And the right question isn't, how do I find my purpose? The right question is, how do I live my purpose? And it's a much more interesting question, and it's much more challenging, which is why we'd rather ask the question, how do I find my purpose? Because it'd be way easier if somebody just gave it to us than it, than it is to have to learn how to live it. And some people on here have been through you know, a year-long process with me and know is hard work. It's hard work to get over all the things that block us from feeling like we're allowed to live our purpose. It really is. Yeah. So, and it takes time. Like, this has been a big area, I'll be completely honest here, it's been a big area of personal growth and um, exploration for me is because in a time frame when all the other coaches I see are offering like 20-minute calls and two-month things and two weeks and you're rich and like all of that, I'm getting longer and longer. I'm saying, no, we're talking about a year. No, my mastermind's a year. We're talking about 18 months. We're talking about two-year time frame so you really even understand what our first call was about. Like that's my time lag with clients. 18 months and they go, oh, I get what we were doing in call one. And I'm like, yes, great. Now you're here. Right now your soul's here. Right up in the front. But we had a long ways to go to get there. Because it's not that your truth, it's not that your purpose is never there. It's that your, truth, your purpose is like hidden under a pile of blankets. And we got to take off all those blankets. In fact, you have to take off all those blankets. Coach's job is to help you remember that you're there underneath and give you little sparks, right? Like that's a teacher's job. Spark it, spark it, spark it so that the blanket disappears, the blanket disappears, the blanket disappears. And all of a sudden you're staring at your beautiful, brilliant soul and going, yeah, this feels good. Thanks. All right. You know, but it's, it's never, you're not a different person. You're just more you. But if we sought that out, if we tried to find it outside of ourselves, we would just be piling on more blankets because we'd have disappointment from this expectation, disappointment that this role failed, disappointment that this job didn't feel right. You know, we'd keep digging ourselves deeper. And we've got to flip that around. So notice the language that you're using. Can you awaken to your purpose? Can you embody your purpose? Can you... Um, Perhaps allow for your purpose to bubble to the surface. You know, find a different image other than looking. Because it's, it's inner looking, right? It's already there. And when we seek, we imply that it's hard to find. And it's not. It's not hard to find. 
This is one of the reasons, actually, a lot of people work with me and a lot of people don't work with me. They're like, what do you mean you can see my purpose in 20 minutes? I'm like, well, you're telling it to me every time you open your mouth. I just know what to listen for, right? You can't hear it, but I can because I know what I'm listening for. And so it's super simple. What's not simple is getting you to live it, right? Like that's a whole bag of tricks. But, but it's there and it's so on the surface that everybody can see it on you. This is why when somebody walks in the room, you know whether or not they're a total a-hole, right? Because we live all of that stuff up front. That doesn't mean they are entirely because everything's a, everything is a, a, a spectrum. It just so happens that maybe they're embodying the shadow side of the spectrum and you feel it right off them, right? Yeah, thanks, Joanna. <laughs> um, but, you know, that means the potential is there for them to be on the light side. Not everybody wants to do that work. If you're feeling really crappy, like what's my purpose, you're on the shadow side. You probably have experiences in your life where you've been on the light side. I guarantee it. But you just, you thought they were flukes. You don't know how to get back there. They felt so good. Now everything feels so bad in comparison. You know, like that's just the other side of the coin. And it takes time to learn how to live there. And we're delaying ourselves if we're seeking, right? It's a process of unfolding, taking off those blankets. Then it is a process of looking because the answer's already there. It's just, it's who you are. Like I, there's no other words for the, the obvious of like, blah, that I want to share, right? So be really mindful of where you are using social roles and expectations as um, like, like gurus, basically. Like you're hoping that a social role will be the answer. And so you're like, somebody just tell me. I've been there before. I'm like, somebody just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. Tell me what you want me to do. Tell me how to be useful. Tell me what to do. Like the number of times I've said that to coaches, like, just tell me what to do and I will do it, but I'm really tired of trying to like self-define and find this because this is part of my purpose, right? Like living my own work is part of this, this calling for me. So I've got to know how crappy that feels. And so I get it. I get that you're like, why is this hard? Why don't I know? Why is everybody else happy? Whether or not they're <laughs> awake is a different question but why have they all got it figured out and everybody else seems to love their job and love their spouse and have perfect children and I'm sitting here going, I'm going through the motions, this feels like crap. And it's because we haven't figured out how to imbue what we do with meaning. Actions themselves are just actions. They're inherently kind of neutral. But when you are in touch with what your individual purpose is, why your soul is separate, feels separate, well, that's a better phrase, feels separate than other souls or other things we see walking around that we might call separate. Then, then I lost the thread of that. <laughs> what? I got so into the semantics of it, I lost what I was actually saying. But once you see why you're, oh, here we go. Once you see why you are you, right? Like, why am I in this form? What am I here to contribute? Then we can be really clear about how we funnel that into action. So the action is the container and we infuse it with meaning. It's like making tea, the hot water is there, you infuse it with the flavor and the tea can change based on what herbs you put in it. The same thing happens in your life. Your job can change based on what you, like the lens that you put on to come into it and the um, level of awareness that you bring to it. So if you come into every job knowing that you're playing out your purpose and you're curious about how it's gonna play out and you get to talk about this purpose area in language that makes sense to mere mortals, right? <laughs> um, then everything has meaning and nothing's off purpose. Nothing. Like, do I feel, do I, would, would I rather, would I rather assign the high exciting moments of my life when I'm up on stage speaking in front of like a hundred people as living my purpose? Yeah, that feels great. That is living my purpose. I am sharing my message. I'm getting it out there. I'm helping people. It feels amazing. Laying under the bed, feeling depressed, going, what am I doing with my life is also my purpose because it's the flip side of the coin, right? So those moments can take the sting away. So take the sting away. You're on purpose already. If you're feeling bad, you're on the shadow side. That's okay. It's okay. You're still on purpose. But the seeking aspect keeps you on the shadow side because you're disempowering yourself by assuming that the answer is somewhere outside of you. 
I know this isn't helpful if you don't know how to find it inside you. So you're like, ugh, fine, I've heard this before. It's all in me. Just be myself, blah, 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 blah. Like, I get that that's frustrating, but it's true. And so when you drop the energy of seeking, think about how much energy you can free up to explore. And this is where self-development gets really fun. But only if it's fun. If you're, oh my God, guys, they are now shredding the tree outside my window. <laughs> can you hear it? Hopefully you can hear it. Um, so self-development can be fun, but only if it's fun. So if you're self-developing out of the desire to perfect or the desire to have this massive awakening one day where your purpose like comes to you through a workbook, like it could happen, but that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. And it, again, it's putting it outside of you. If you view self-development as like a fun process to find even more joy and see where like maybe find where the joy is hiding, like, okay, hide and seek with fun. That would be fun. Hide and seek with joy. Try to find more joy. Where's the joy hiding? Go find more of it. You know, like that's a good process because that's kind of living your purpose is digging deeper and deeper into the joy. Let me just see that I covered everything. So finding your purpose is ridiculous as an ocean. You can be aware of it, absolutely. You're not separate from it. All of that is, somebody just sent me a vid random video. All of that is um, rooted outside of yourself, not within yourself. So we've got to make that transition, that seeking is part of the problem. So just drop it, literally just drop it, stop seeking. And look where you're using language, like finding, like um, I wish somebody would give me the answer, like, Oh, is it going to be this job? Like nothing, no role is going to give it to you, give you your purpose, because your purpose is about what you bring to every role. It's about what carries between all the roles you play. I talk about it um, sometimes like beads on a necklace, and you have the bead of your marriage, you have the bead of your first marriage, you have the bead of that um, internship you had after college, you had that bead of the time you were a professional sports player. You've got all these beads, and they don't seem to connect except your purpose is the thread that connects them and your purpose is running through all of them. Maybe as a lesson, I hate that phrase, but maybe as a lesson that you learned about how to live your purpose more deeply and it came through pain. Or maybe as a way of expressing it and you really loved this particular type of connection, but that's like how to live your purpose. It's a slightly different place. But these beads, the thread between them is what connects them all, right? So we're looking for the thread, not the role. And we're looking for um, the desire, not the expectation. So this concept of like somebody help me figure it out or somebody just tell me what to do, like that somebody else is um, putting on like blinders and saying you'd be good at this job. Like, okay, but it's not your purpose, right? That's like a way for you to morph into a box and fit that shape for a while. But it's not going to solve that problem. It's not going to solve that feeling of like, yeah, but what am I without this shape? Or what do I bring to this shape? And if you lose the shape, meaning you lose your job, you lose that particular way of expressing yourself, then you're like, I'm worthless. And that's a pretty horrible feeling. These are existential crises. They're literally existential crises. Who am I? Right? And why am I valuable? Why am I here? So it's big stuff. But one of the key steps is changing our language, changing our thinking about it. So dropping this phrase of finding. You're not finding. You're awakening to. You're opening to. Um, but it's not outside of you. It's just who you are. It's just who you are. And it's beyond explanation, obviously, because I talked for like 40 minutes and you might think, what's she really saying? And I'm pointing to it, right? <laughs> it's just like that. You, I, I use this a lot. Like you look at a star and you can't see it and you look away and you're like, but it's right there. And you look back and you can't see it. Like I'm pointing you at it. We can't necessarily look straight at it, but we can talk all around it. We can talk all around what it feels like. And then when you have that experience of feeling it yourself, which is my favorite part of my work, my favorite part of my work is the first like 25 minutes. It's to, to have you see your purpose so clearly that all of that frustration goes, oh, and for a brief second, you accept yourself exactly as you are in your full entirety. And you see that everything you ever did was on purpose and you're not broken and you're not wrong, and everything in your life is totally on purpose. I'm going to cry even talking about it. That's the moment I live for. It's a moment of absolution where you absolve yourself of what you've been beating yourself up with because you see yourself as whole. 
and it's so beautiful. But then we've got to learn how to live it yourself, right? Because then the mind comes in and is like, what does that mean about my relationships, my business, my blah, 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 my job, my blah, you know? And then we, we freak out for a year or so until we learn how to be there. We take off all the blankets. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful process. It's a beautiful process of getting happier. It's a beautiful process of allowing yourself to just live more joy. It's allowing yourself to infuse everything you do with the same energy, the energy of you, of your purpose. It's beautiful. So we can't look outside of ourselves for that. We just can't. You can get help pointing to it. That's what I do. I help point people to it. But we can't say, tell me the answer. You know, because we have to live the answer. It's not a job. Right? Like I can tell you your purpose in words. Like that, that's not what I mean. Like I can give you the emotional spectrum of your purpose that you're playing out because you give it to me. So I give it back to you in ways you can hear. Um, but we can't live it for other people. You know, like nobody can tell you, oh yeah, just go be a doctor and you'll be happy forever. Like it doesn't work that way. <laughs> right? Kids have purpose too. People who don't work have purpose too. Homeless people have purpose too. Like everybody has something that they are embodying and bringing into that mesh and fiber of social life. And knowing what that is can really, really help you infuse it deliberately and intentionally so that you feel life is meaningful. But you can't find it if you're looking outside yourself. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, I'm just reading my notes again to make sure I covered everything. If you have any questions, please pop them below. Um, at any time, even if you're watching the replay, let me know and we will, I'll come back, I'll pop in and answer them because I think Facebook alerts me when they're, when they're there. Um, but yeah, this is big stuff, big stuff. So we just got to drop some of these extraneous things, <laughs> you know, like the finding. All right. I'll give it another moment because there is a time lag. Um, yes. Okay. I don't see any other comments coming in, but at any time, feel free to pop them in, especially if you're watching the replay. Thank you so much. If you know anybody who would benefit from this, please share it with them. I am hugely honored that you joined in this with me and thank you for the hearts and the ha ha faces and all of that. Um, and hopefully God willing, I will talk to you tomorrow. Mwah.